Hello and welcome to another episode of Frightfully Forgotten Horror Movies. But before we get started, what are we drinking? Today we are drinking Slaughtered Lamb English Bitter. <laughs> yeah, alright. Today we're doing something completely different than our usual thing, because this is a Patreon request from Mark Miller to watch iconic scenes from the original 1978 Halloween and do commentary on top of it. A lot of people do these reaction fucking videos. Like, the thumbnail is always the same. Yeah, yeah. First time reaction. Yeah, sure. That's you're fucking forty years old. That's the first time you watched Ghostbusters. Yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah. Come on. We're not changing the channel to become one of those reaction <laughs> people. Although you should actually put the thumbnail as. Yeah. We're gonna try to knock it down to five. Yeah. Iconic scenes from the first Halloween. So let's kick it off. Loomis's drive to Smith's Grove in the car. Mark actually wanted us to talk about the opening scene where Michael's a kid and he kills his sister um, but we you know it's, it's a great scene and all but it's kind of you don't need it you no. could start the movie right here yeah and it's and it's actually better if it does yeah because it adds even more mystery to Michael let me start raving on and on you haven't anything to worry about he hasn't spoken a word in 15 years if they open the movie with that, you don't... You have no idea. Yeah, he hasn't spoken a word in 15 years. Who? Yeah. You know? Yeah. It actually would have been more mysterious if they didn't have the opening scene. Smoking in the car. Yeah. She's all chain smoking, too. Yeah, I like how he, like... What do I give him when we take him in front of the judge? Thorazine. Thorazine. We'll barely be able to sit up. That's... Yeah. yeah. And the way this scene is, is lit too, you really do believe it's not, it's just the dash. Yeah. Just the lights from the dash that are illuminating the faces. Yeah. You mean you actually never want them to get out? Never. 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 The three nevers. Yeah, he, is, he means it. Yeah. And uh, I like that too because he's always blamed for Michael getting out, but. He says it right there, yeah, because it, that's the law. That's His the law. hands are tied. Since when did they let them wander around? Pull up to the main gate. <laughs> Shouldn't we put... Go on, move. <laughs> Go on, move. Go on, move. Go on, move. I love that. That shot is brilliant with just yeah. a couple of... Not even many people. Just, just one or two. One or two, but because there's darkness behind them, you don't know how many more are in the yeah. darkness. Yeah. And I love that, that scene with Loomis where he's like, Go on, move. <laughs> And that scene there, too, like, when he climbs up, it's like a fucking spider or Ding! something. And you, again, you don't see his face. Yeah. And again, this seems, like, really realistic. Like, it doesn't seem like it's, it's Hollywood. It's, like, over-embellished. Like, if someone were to grab you... That's how that's it would how be. you'd react. Yeah, you'd, yeah. you'd press on the gas, right? Yeah. And again, you, you don't see Michael barely. No, you see no. this shape. And it's still not, a shape. Yeah, and it's not all crazy. Like, oh. there's not... Uh, and the iconic line. He's gone. He's gone from here. The evil is gone. The evil is gone. He's gone. He's gone. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> and then you just see the headlights drive off in the blackness. Yeah, and that's it. Why is that scene so great? Uh, well, <clears throat> it sets up all of the mystery about Michael, mm -hmm. right? It sets everything up. It's And it's it also sets the tone for the rest of the movie. And the lighting is great. Even outside, like when, when, when Myers jumps over the car, just the red. Just mm -hmm. the red from the taillights, right? Yep. That's perfect. Exactly. And I like how they, when they turn, like the headlights see those few people in the field right yeah well hold, this isn't normal yeah so already even without michael that's scary yeah because these are insane people yeah in an insane yeah. asylum yeah. and they've broken out well what the fuck happened yeah <laughs> you know like yeah. you don't even need michael in that in some of that right, right. most of that scene this, the awful. menu for this dvd is just the <laughs> fucking worst like I should really get a better version of this film than this piece of shit DVD. The classic Dr. Loomis 
the blackest eyes speech. Mm -hmm. And just that shot there of, of that house. Yeah. With the car pulling up is fucking brilliant. The, the way it, it focuses out. Can you, can, like, what a great old abandoned house. Yeah, and the way it's lit, yeah. too, right? In a way, it, it the house has the blackest eyes, mm -hmm. too, yeah. just like Michael. And it kind of does look like a face a bit. Mm -hmm. We can't watch this without talking about the music. The, the, the music for this movie is fucking... It, it makes it. It, it. it does make it. It, it's that extra it's not even the icing on the cake I think it's it, it 50% is, yeah. it's 50% of the recipe it is the cake really yeah it does make it a cut above the rest really it, yeah because really the movie is sort of mediocre without it and the fact that this is all one shot is pretty crazy up the stairs falling through seamless they're not you're not seeing any shadows from like the, the, the lights, the lights of the crew, or it's it's. They're trying to get their use out of that panaglide, yeah. or whatever it was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love how he's super, way too slow with the gun. Like. Yeah. I met this six-year-old child with this blank, pale. <laughs> like it's, it just grips you. It grips right you in. Like I. Want to be able to talk over the speech but and you say don't. why it's so good, but you don't want to talk over it because you don't want to interrupt such a fucking great piece of dialogue. Yeah. It's really... It's one of the best ever. Evil. I love the fact, too, that, like, Loomis... Like, when he says, you seem like you're really scared. Yeah. He's scared. Yeah. He's the only one who's scared. Because he knows. He's the only one who that knows... The what, evil that's yeah. lurking around Haddonfield right now. It's less about Michael. It's more about Loomis. Yeah. Really about what Loomis sees yeah. in Michael, and, right? And what's driving him, the driving yeah. force behind Loomis. It's just so fucking brilliant where it, it tells you nothing about Michael Myers as a human. Yeah, but, but it, it tells you everything about him as a monster. A lot of scenes nowadays, as soon as you have a scene like that, gotta have a joke. Yeah, after to kind of cut yeah. the ice. Yeah, or, it's like, no, keep the ice. Yeah. And the fact that Loomis is not perfect. Yeah. He's not this badass, like, I'm going to go out and kill Michael. He's scared. Yeah, like, he's just a human being. He's scared. He, he knows that his life and every and other people's lives are on the line. The next scene we're going to do commentary on is when Annie gets killed in the car. The first thing you hear, I love in this scene, is you hear... The thing. Yeah, you hear the TV. It, <laughs> yeah. it, it makes it feel like Halloween. You, there's there's scary movies on the TV. Yeah. Turn off the lights. I kind of miss that about yeah, Halloween. So. Like, cause everything is so accessible now. Streaming, Netflix, all this shit. You can watch whatever you want, whenever you want. But back in the day, Sometimes the only time you got to watch some of these movies was around Halloween. You look forward to, ah, oh, what's going to be playing on TV yeah. Yeah. around Halloween. I can only watch this movie around Halloween time. Yeah. Because that's, that's only when they play it. I miss TV for that, for the randomness of it. And again, like, they don't show Meyer's mask full on. You see him stand up, you know he's got a white mask on, but you don't know the features. You can't see it. Yeah. So what is Tommy supposed to be dressed as? What's his fucking costume? I think he's to... Luke Skywalker. He looks like Luke Skywalker to me. I've always thought... I just kind of always assumed it was Luke Skywalker without even really thinking about uh, it. I think you see like what looks like a lightsaber yeah. or something on his belt. It's Luke Saber! <laughs> She's always looked like Bond Scott to me. Annie? She looks exactly like Bond Scott. Kind of looks like Bond Scott. That kind of takes this the sexiness away from her <laughs> a little bit, though, I think. Yeah, she, well, look. Even the hair. She looks yeah. exactly like Bond Scott. Yeah. <laughs> wonder if she's got the clap. <laughs> <laughs> I always like the fact that she's carving a pumpkin now after they're done trick-or-treating and everything like yeah, isn't it's it like, too late to carve late. the fucking pumpkin like yeah. halloween's over it's time to smash all the pumpkins if, if, and everything if, if if the kids are home from trick-or-treating 
That's it. It's too late yeah. for a pumpkin. <laughs> Done. The kids will be counting their candy and all that shit. And again, I love the kids are just fixated on the TV. Yep. They're not being. I don't have my phone up here, but <laughs> they're, they're not, they're not being. They're not phone. being distracted by their phone. They're just like watching that fucking TV. So here, yeah. very important. Yep. Locked. Doors locked. And this is one of those things too that. This is one of those kinds of things back then where you had to watch and pay attention mm -hmm. to a movie. Things weren't spelled out for you. You couldn't be on your fucking phone it's, being yeah, distracted. Yeah, and if you're on your phone and then you have this on, you're going to miss all the important stuff. And I love the fact that, like, that she's singing to herself is, is neat. She's not like, open the door... Ah, I forgot my keys. Like, no keys. Yeah, like, she's yeah. Singing, I kind of like just, that. It's a neat little core to the character that you always remember. Yeah. It's not just anybody. It's Annie. You know, it, it's his character development and plot, and moving the plot forward at the same time. Yeah. Uh, and then she doesn't need the keys. She doesn't need the keys. But she doesn't time. realize that. Yeah. Because she's singing. And see how all the, the, the windows are yeah. fogged up because someone's in there breathing. Yeah. And that's the first real time you see the, the mass. Yeah, too. but even it's still foggy. It's obscured by the fog, yeah. It makes it, him even creepier because you still don't really get a good glimpse of him. And this whole, like... And one, sh and I wouldn't say one shot, but it's continuous. You see the whole thing happen. And I like how there's no blood. Yeah, no blood. It's just the music that signifies yeah. that he killed her. That scene, I think, has made everybody. Whenever you go to your car at night, you yeah. always look, take you always a glimpse look in, in the, the back. back seat. Yeah, and if your windows are foggy. You better fucking get out of the car now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so the next scene we're gonna do commentary on is the classic head tilt, yeah. stab to the wall when Paul dies. We have it paused here just before he goes to get out of bed. And the first thing we gotta <laughs> mention is the fucking pumpkin on the nightstand. <laughs> it's all lit and everything too. I love Halloween as much or more <laughs> than most people. I've never put a pumpkin on my fucking nightstand. First of all, it takes up so much space. Yeah, where are you gonna put your beer? And I think the pumpkin on the um, nightstand, they kinda have to do certain things like that because they filmed this in the spring. They didn't film it in the fall, so it doesn't really feel like a Halloween movie so much because it's actually in the spring. They had to yeah. force fall Halloween upon on. the movie. We, we just missed it. We missed the knee. Yeah, you can hear the music though at the point. And that's a trope that this movie started, which I wish it hadn't, <laughs> is the, the musical cue when you don't always need it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, okay, this movie, it's, it works in Halloween because it was new, mm -hmm. refreshing. But like, even till this day, I, I watched a, you know, whatever, any generic horror movie. Yeah, like, you yeah. don't always need that musical cue. You, sometimes the visual cue and you questioning, did I just see that? It's, it's, is enough. Just simply not, right? Not knowing the, uh, the value of your own horror movie that you're making. Yeah. That's what it is. And again, the lighting in this, we said it before, but it's very natural lighting. Yeah. It's use a lot of blue light. It's just from outside or in the fridge. But I like how you barely see anything, right? And then you see that door you open. You see the doors open, it kind of... So you yeah. know that it's like, okay, well, that's probably how he got in. Because nobody locks their doors when they're supposed to. Well, back in the day, nobody you trusted everybody. No one locked their door. <laughs> Don't is, lock your door in the fucking country. This is why you're not supposed to keep your doors open. And this, they all copied this scene in the new one, yeah. Halloween Kills, and it's like, well, fuck, he already did this in the original. See, and again, you don't see the full features of the no, mask. No, and it's almost completely covered. 
And he's strong enough yeah. to lift a guy up, a man up. And he's also strong enough to stab a guy <laughs> right through into the door. Like... And that's the anatomy of a great murder scene in a classic horror movie. We don't need tons of gore. There's no gore. No. There's no real effects. The only effects is the way they framed each shot. When he opens that, the door that Michael ends up coming out of, you don't expect that because you expect a red herring. You expect like a, a, they already, false, a false jump scare. Because they already did it once. Because right? you always expect so. like, oh, and then like, Whatever the 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 ironing board comes out or whatever, so something else comes out. Yeah. You're expecting that because you've seen it so many times. You're not expecting Michael actually to come out of that closet. Paul looks like, you know, a decently built man. Michael actually looks like a skinny twerp. Yeah. Like when they show him, you yeah. kind of see his body here and there. He looks skinny. But he overpowers him, no problem, and he lifts him up, no problem. So the next scene we're going to cover is kind of the final act, almost, where Loomis stumbles upon, just by chance, yeah, yeah. where Michael is. <laughs> see, I love this. It's windy. It's the end of Halloween. You can see the toilet paper that people have yeah. strung up. It kind feels of... like the end, yeah. right? And this line coming up here, perfect. You can see him coming up, too. Yeah, you can see the shadow coming up, which is great. And that line, you can't kill the boogeyman, and there he is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. And then the music kicks in. And he's hurt. Yep. You can tell he's hobbling a bit. Yep. Um, again, this scene of the, the iconic lighting through the blinds. Exactly. And I like how she opens the she opens the the balcony doors to maybe trick him. Yeah. It looks like. But then she hides in here in the closet. And the and, music, you can't deny uh, the music. That is pretty kind of like very similar to a heartbeat. It's not yeah. a heartbeat per se, but the beat is similar to a heartbeat. It puts you on the edge of your seat. And when you see how flimsy that door is, yeah, you know he's getting in. Yeah, exactly. It's like it's, there's nothing, nothing's keeping him out. But I like how he he really reefs on the door though too. Like he's pissed off and he's determined. Like he really wants to get in, right? So I mean, he's coming, and she gives it away like by screaming. Yeah, I mean, but this too, like I like how she grabs the coat hanger, right? Like. She doesn't have anything special. No. She just quickly uses it. And the light coming off. around and, oh, man. Oh. And, again, the breathing. Like, that's something that they don't utilize in any of the sequels. Is the breathing. Nearly as much as they should is the breathing. She stabs him, but you don't know exactly where. No. The fact he's right there, he's laying exactly where she needs to walk, walk over. over. Like that's building great suspense because you don't know. Is yeah, he well, gonna... yeah, it's like it's perfect. It's the perfect moment for him to grab. And again, the way the shot is lit, like the frame from the window, the yeah. window frame, brilliant lighting, brilliant in its simplicity. A lot of that is Dean Cundy, I think. Uh, Dean Cundy was the DOP on this and did yeah. a fucking brilliant job. Yeah. It was great because they didn't have... I like how there's no haste there in the kids. Yeah, they just kind of stumble away. Oh, and this is just the best ever. I think every... Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. man. You know... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, what do you say to that, yeah. right? What do you say? There's That is... I think every horror movie always aspires to a scene like yeah. that. But nobody can ever match that. And just by chance, Loomis happens to be in the vicinity. <laughs> yeah. And this, too, like, Laurie, 
She thinks she's clear. Yeah. She's she's finished. And the fact that Michael's out of focus too is really cool. Now he's in focus. Mm -hmm. And again, the breathing yeah. is a big part of it. And the shadows, like, and then Loomis is just yeah, there. Yeah. Yeah, and this part, like. Why did he puts it back on? Like, he needs the mask on. Right. Like, the mask is the priority. Yeah, yeah. Super walking up that ramp. Yeah, yeah they, they all show it even more in the second one. Yeah. What's the boogeyman? <laughs> As a matter of fact, it was. <laughs> yeah. Like, can he get much brilliant and simpler writing than that yeah it's just, no it's simple and brilliant and it works perfectly look at this and how he comes up and i love just his face yeah. his eyes kind of widen he's and not he know he's surprised but not surprised at the same time he knows which is a great great acting there it's like uh, it, yeah he doesn't say anything yeah. it's just all in the performance and the music and then like that yeah that he could be anywhere could be right? anywhere and he could be anywhere and that's what the movie's supposed to leave you feeling with was when yeah. you're going home that night after watching the theater he could be anywhere you're getting into your car at the theater <laughs> what do you think of well yeah. michael and Myers yeah. in the back of the car is there right? condensation on the windshield yeah. hmm. or when you get home is Somebody waiting in the pantry. Yeah, and that's the brilliance of the movie is you getting into your car at the end of the movie and yep. thinking, ah, oh, fuck. <laughs> so we have a bonus scene here for you <laughs> because it is a kind of a bonus scene. Yep. This scene was shot specifically for the TV edit of the first Halloween back in the day where they shot extra scenes for TV edits to make yeah. them longer. Yeah, to make up the time slot. So this is the scene that we see a flashback of Loomis visiting Michael in his room when yeah. he's still a child. And he has a little something to say to Michael. <laughs> he's all got the hat yeah, on. Yeah, like what he's wearing is all like... <laughs> They're trying to make him look a little bit hipper and younger, but it doesn't Not. quite work. <laughs> yeah, I like how he's a standoffish already, yeah. eh? Doesn't want to get too close to him. Yeah. Because he knows. You can tell he's waiting for something. Well, waiting for what? Yeah. But obviously, Loomis has to start. Yeah. Because Michael's not. It's kind of a Western standoffish type, like. Mm. You fooled him, haven't you, Michael? But not me. I like how he kind of smiles, too, like, I got one up on you. Yeah. And Michael is listening to that saying, yeah, he hasn't fooled me. Yeah, yeah. Like, when you think about it, yeah, he hasn't. So Loomis is always a threat yeah. to him, right? Because he knows that Loomis has not been fooled. He's always the Van Helsing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Always. Well, he knows, but the thing is, is that Loomis's hands are always tied by bureaucracy, it yeah. seems, yeah. right? And then yeah. he's always getting blamed for everything. He's always the scapegoat for everything. So that's the end of our little Halloween commentary breakdown of five, actually six, six. <laughs> iconic scenes. It's a little different for us, hard to do. I thought it was hard to just sit and talk. And... Yeah, yeah. Well, the thing is, like, especially with Halloween, like, 
you get so engrossed into the movie too that you don't want to really talk. You don't want to talk scenes, over it. Right? Yeah, it's it's hard. And it's... then you you also just want to keep watching the damn movie. I don't want to <laughs> yeah. stop it. It's like no, I keep going and forget about the video that yeah. we're making. So I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs> yeah. And if you have any comments to make about the scenes we commented on, let us know. And until next time, keep drinking. <laughs>